So I'm reaching out to you today uh, as a person who had clinically died uh, in November, November the 11th actually, uh, in 1987. Uh, in operating room number 11. And for those of you who have watched my near-death experience videos, um, you know, I don't wanna to spend too much time on going into a lot of the near-death experience, but what I would like to do is kind of recap um, a little bit about my near-death experience. Prior to November the 11th of 1987, I was the it boy at CBS in the news division. I was studying to become a special effects makeup artist. And in order to get in the union, I had to take the job with CBS News and reluctantly I did so, not realizing this would change my life. And in the height of my career, work, working with so many dissenters and politicians and you know, VIPs and television stars, you know, film stars, I, I had an near death experience. And prior to that, I let something go. I was diagnosed with a stomach ulcer and being very busy in our industry, we just don't have time to run to the doctor every two or three weeks and something very simple got out of control. And by the time I came upon November the 11th, I was down to 100 pounds. I had lesions on my uh, torso, uh, you know, my neck and my face. I was stuffing my suit with uh, newspapers and, and Kleenex so you couldn't tell that I had lost so much weight. And, uh, wrapping up on a party for CBS uh, that evening, as well as celebrating my birthday, I excused myself, went into the restroom, and everything from that point on went into a very surreal moment. I excused myself and went home, and I called a friend, and within minutes, I knew that something tragic was happening. They rushed me to the hospital. It was a medical mishap, uh, medical complications, you name it, it went wrong. And at 11.11 11 p.m. that night, on November the 11th, I died on an operating table with a perforated viscous. And many people ask me, you know, like so many of us who've had near-death experiences, you know, what did you see? You know, what happened? What's, what's paramount to you? Well, I could spend hours and hours talking to you about what happened to me you know, that night, but I'll kind of highlight, like so many of us, we do experience the white light. Like so many of us, we go through this tunnel. But what was a little different for me was that as I'm going through this tunnel, I'm being downloaded with information. And when I say downloaded with information, I, I tell to so many of my people who come to my lectures, you know, so imagine the mind of Darwin and Tesla, Einstein, you know, your, your, your high school English teacher or your history teacher, all that was being downloaded into my consciousness and I got it. But one of the most paramount things I can share with you was as a creative person, I was being downloaded with mathematical equations. I was seeing quantum physics, geometry, you know, algebra, uh, you know, codes I couldn't even begin to understand. An example like the numbers 222, 333, 555, 777, 999. At the time, I had absolutely no idea, looking back at that moment in my life, what they meant. At that moment in the tunnel, I knew exactly what it was. So things, uh, highlighting the most important things from my near-death experience. Number one, I learned very quickly going through that tunnel that there's no such thing as judgment. We have been manipulated and we have been taught and we have been, for centuries, um, been guided by fear and by the opinions of others. And I learned during this tunnel travel, if you will, that while you're in this moment of life and not seeing your physical body, but you're feeling yourself and you're having these conversations with something, a force beyond your own understanding, you begin to digest and, and to comprehend. You don't go into a moment of what's going on and you know, WTF, you're basically going, you're getting it, you're downloading it and you're understanding it. So judgment and opinions was the first thing I learned and more to the point, judging myself and or allowing other people's opinions to matter more than my own. The second thing that I uh, tuned into while I was spinning through this tunnel was our environment. Um, 
as I'm going towards my life review, I'm looking down at Mother Earth, and I can see we as a collective consciousness doing things to our planet, to our animal kingdom, to ourselves, that just wasn't coming from a place of love and kindness. I mean, the complete opposite. And so I was able to look down during my life review and seeing, you know, the massacre of dolphin and the the cruelty to dogs and cats and horses and I mean, I could spend again, you know, hours talking about the cruelty that I saw, you know, being put upon these animals. So with me, when I did come back, that was an ingredient that kind of changed my my, if you will, my 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 destiny. Uh, the other thing that I experienced uh, on the other side was and I don't want to get too political here but I saw that we were so eager to put people in office who were so eager to take our power away from us and while you're looking down at Mother Earth and you're seeing and not just here in the United States but all around the planet people just abusing their power and not really believing in us, but believing in their pocketbooks. So for me, that was an awakening for me when I did come back to make a difference in trying to reach out to all of you on this planet. Um, you know, as I said, so many things occurred on the other side. Um, you know, and again, for me, I realized, you know, prior to this near-death experience, um, I went in stuttering. I was very nervous around people talking in front of a camera like today. I couldn't have done it. But I saw myself speaking to people all around the world about my near-death experience. I saw myself writing books. I saw myself traveling everywhere and talking to children as well, you know, about love and kindness and compassion. And as you're looking down and seeing yourself, if you will, your life ahead of you and your life, obviously that uh, what we call, I don't want to call it sin, but human error. I saw not only myself, but what we all tend to do and how we are manipulated by fear and the opinions of others. And so for me, coming back here on this planet um, and, and having information that I think is valuable for all of us to this day, uh, I remember the moment I hit my physical body, the pain. I mean, I could smell the drugs in my system. I could feel the pain of the surgery. Uh, I was unconscious for three and a half weeks and I remember when I opened up my eyes and looked at the doctors and the nurses all around me. I could hear their thoughts. I could hear their opinions of me. Their thoughts like this poor guy is not going to make it. At this time I'm what, you know, close to 90 pounds and had, had uh, they were just basically feeding my body with, with uh, you know, with all kinds of liquids just to get me just to just to the point of of some some strength but i looked around at these doctors and i looked around at the nurses and i began to talk about my near-death experience and i just blurted out that i had a conversation with god i i i had to talk about what was happening to the animal kingdom i had to talk about the environment i had to talk about god and i remember looking at these doctors and nurses and some of the interns that were in the room as well. And they were looking at me like, oh my God, this guy's like just whacked out. And so this began my journey of recovery. You know, no one listening to me. Um, I think the greatest challenge that I faced uh, were the people that eventually stopped showing up in the hospital. You know, I was in the hospital for over three months and the, the medical complications, the the inexplicable reactions I had to all the medications. You know, and again, I kept talking about freely, not stuttering, but talking about what happened to me. I did not classify it as a near-death experience as much as I talked about, you know, I had a conversation with God. I talked about being at the hand of, of an advanced being. Call it Jesus, call it an angel, call it whatever you want. But whoever it was was sitting on my side and allow me to see the entire planet, the entire galaxy, if you will, and how important our thoughts are. What I learned through this experience was that we make choices every day. The choice to talk today and, and, and share my story, uh, the choice to go to work, the choice to stay in a bad relationship, or the choice to get married, the choice to, to, to go to a coffee shop and sit down to a stranger and have a conversation. It's all based upon a choice. And so for me, 
I came back with the choice to share my message. I had uh, countless emails about dogs and cats that were missing, children that were missing, and people were just sending their heartfelt you know, letters and emails, help, help, help. And what I realized, what I realized was so important was that we are dealing with subjects that so oftentimes are not supported by our husbands or our wives or our boyfriends, for that matter, our bosses, our coworkers, our neighbors. We kind of find those ears, those voices that get what we're experiencing. And we began to quietly and behind the scenes share these messages, share these conversations, share these events, these circumstances that happened in our life. And so for some reason you felt connected, you felt that what I said resonated with your heart and you wanted to hear from me and I did my very best to reach out to you. But what we're doing here today is I wanna hear your stories I want to know about your experiences. I had one person who reached out to me who, like myself, had a connection to rescuing an animal. It was a cat. And uh, she was from Phoenix. And she said for some reason she was waking up and was, had no pets, never really wanted a pet. But she kept having reincurring dreams about this cat. And she went to a shelter. And when she walked in, she saw this cat. and rescued this cat, and this cat became a part of her life. Well, I can identify with that because all my life, after my near-earth experience, I began to rescue animals. And the reason why is because, you know, when so many people leave your life and, and don't want to hear your stories and they don't care about the near-death experience and they kind of look at you, you know, like you went and had dinner with, you know, Bigfoot, you know, on the, you know, in, in, on the inside of a UFO, you know, you kind of go, hmm, maybe it's not time for them to listen to the story. But what I did notice, it was interesting, as my world began to fall apart and people began to disappear from my life, I remember going back to that moment of seeing all these animals in kill shelters while I was on the other side. And something occurred to me that was to go and rescue animals. Children are innocent. They are loving. They don't have conditions put upon them. When they see what I consider a being of love and light and kindness, they are attracted to that. And that's the same thing that happens with animals. Animals are attracted to that love and kindness and that, you know, that, that caring personality that you have. Think about this. Your dog doesn't speak English, your dog doesn't speak Spanish, your dog doesn't speak Chinese. But for some reason, when you walk into that to your home and that dog or cat is so happy to see you, you have this conversation that's going on and you begin to understand each other. How do you explain that? Well, I call it feelings, emotion. Animals can smell fear and animals can smell love. My responsibility, my job, my duty is to get out into Mother Nature, take a gratitude walk, and go and meet a complete stranger and have that connection. You know, we don't know that that person that we're having a conversation with could be the very person that needs our love or our kindness or attention that day. It happened to me during the Christmas holidays when I was out on, on book tour, and I was <laughs> grueling hours, grueling travel, you get the whole thing from city to city to city and I ended up in Texas and it was during the Christmas holidays and I would go up the elevator and down the elevator and I'd see this very good looking man who would get in this crowded elevator going to 24 hour fitness and he just always looked down and so you know you just kind of look at this guy and like what's so what's so sad what's so wrong in your life so I remember when I was leaving, I, it was cold, it was cloudy, it was sleeting outside. And we were going from the fourth or fifth floor all the way down to, to basement level two. And we got out and he and I were the only two in the elevator. And um, I get kind of emotional here, so bear with me. But um, was walking to, to my car and his car happened to be next to my car. And I was opening up the door and this little voice inside said to me, speak to this young man. 
So I said to this young man, I said, you know, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a, and a great holiday. And he turned around and he paused and he looked at me and I could see tears in his eyes. And, um, sorry, but he said to me the following, he said, you know, I just moved here and I don't know anyone here. And I lost my father, my mother, and I've been very depressed. And he said, I don't have anyone to spend the holiday with. And he said, I've been, I moved here. And he said, I feel so isolated and so alone and, and so confused. And I was very close to, my, to both my parents. And he said to me in this parking lot, I was going to go home and take my life. And I looked at this guy. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. So I reached over and I hugged him. And I said to him, I said, you know what? Don't even consider that. You know what? I understand because, you know, I've lost both my, my, my parents, my sisters, my, my, my brothers, uh, my uncles, my, my grandparents. I said, I'm an orphan now here at this age in my life. I don't have any family. I said, so what I do is, is I just go around and I rescue animals. And I said, my whole Christmas is about spending time with my animals. And he looked at me and he just sobbed in my arms. And, you know, I go back to that moment of simply this. Maybe you're that person, that one person who helps save the, the man or the woman that you happen to talk with. We don't know what people are experiencing. We don't know the shadows of depression that people are experiencing, especially today. So as I said, so your opportunity might be to share something with someone that day. Is there anything of great value that you learned while you were spinning through that tunnel? Yeah, that we basically don't understand that every moment that we are here on this planet is a gift. And as I'm watching me physically die on the operating table and watching or feeling me, the spirit form, if you will, being guided into this tunnel, I realized at that moment that we're all here as tenants on this planet. And it was during that white light experience that I realized that my life matters as does your life matter. You know, we begin with a thought and the thought becomes an action. In other words, we do something with that thought and it entail creates a reaction. So we think it, we act upon it, and we let the ripple effects, if you will, create the new reality. And again, going back to the, the consciousness of thoughts, I learned to start trusting my thoughts, my own heartfelt, if you will, understanding of what I had to do next. Body, mind, and spirit are all one. They are not separate. What I read, what I'm taking in, and one of those things I do is I don't watch the news. I What I do watch is I watch comedies. I watch um, videos that are inspiring. I read books that enlighten my mind that give me hope we are so manipulated by fear and the opinions of others think about this the talking heads the pundits being in the news division for for eight nine years i watch what we did how we manipulated the audiences for ratings sake so i'm saying to you turn off those tvs you know, we, we get up and we, we, we have our coffee and we take our shower and we're watching the news and then we get in rush hour traffic and, you know, then we go to our jobs that we hate. I can see you people in your cars looking down at your will and your watches and your cell phones, you know, sighing with just anger and just angst, if you will, going to work and working with the boss that you don't like and doing a job you don't like. Well, that's not coming from a place of higher consciousness, is it? So think about that. Change your life. Start putting out to the universe, what do I really want to do? What am I thinking today? What are my goals? What do I see happening in my life? What do I want to happen in my life? And the other thing I stress to all of you, what kind of relationships are you surrounding yourself with? Are they toxic or do they inspire you? For me, that was my greatest reality. That was my checkpoint. Who are these people that are constantly criticizing me? Who are these people who are doubting me? 
All my life I've been doubted. So I tell you what I do, folks. I go back to this, to my heart. I digest. I seek the counsel of those people that I trust, that support me, that love me, that get me. I find those kindred souls that understand me, and they are the people I listen to. Start there. Find those support systems. If you're all by yourself, get out and involve yourself in the community. I rescue animals. You know, I help abuse uh, children and women who are in dire circumstances. I, I'm on my second book. I'm writing a screenplay. I'm on a book tour. And people say to me all the time, well, I don't have time. I made the time for nine years writing Keymaster. Every morning I got up at 4.30, I wrote until 7.30, I showered, I made sure I ate correctly, I was on an airplane, and every, for nine years I traveled to anywhere from 46 cities to 50 cities a year. Business. With no holidays, no birthdays, no anniversaries, I worked. And people said, how do you do it? That's how I did it. You just do it. Because if it's coming from passion, you'll find the time. And what I suggest to all of you, maybe, an hour of your time. Do something that serves yourself. Be kind to yourself. Think about that. Coffee, news, traffic, boss you don't like, in a relationship is not serving you well. Well, no wonder we're all depressed. And then we turn into the news and they depress us even more. So, you know what? Stop. Stop what you're doing. You know, people said we're at a crossroads in life right now. We're at a T intersection. We can do one or two things. You're, here's the T intersection. We have a parallel line here and a line right through here. And where we are at that stop sign, we can go left or we can go right. Well, you know what I've done? Straight ahead, I went through the meadow and that is where I found my life. That's where things began for me. So many of you wrote into me about your relationships, about your career, about money, uh, about divorces. Um, um, many of you wrote in and, and uh, shared their stories about, you know, being abducted, you know, by aliens. Many of you wrote in and talked about ghost encounters. Many of you wrote in and talked about the angelic encounters. And I mean, I could go down the list here of all the different events that took place in your life. And number one, I was flattered that you reached out to me. And I think part of the reason why you reached out to me is because I'm kind of like the Mikey of the universe. You know, you kind of like go to the top of the mountain and you go in there, have your conversation with God, you have your burning bush. And I come down the mountain and I share my story with you guys and you relate to it. And so I think where we're all lacking is we need a support system here for, to, to, to share our stories with. And so what I learned from all of you is that people weren't listening to you. Well, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing your stories. And I want to share something here with you. What, seven months ago, I sat down and did a YouTube video about my near-death experience. And in that last part of that video, I said, I send a purchase order out to the universe every day. And so if we are sending a universal thought to, if you will, to God, to Jesus, to Mary, to to the angels, to the ascended masters. You can put any category that you choose where you where you identify most with. But what I am saying to you is this. If you put a real pure thought out to the universe and ask how may I be of service, rather than the money and the relationship, and I'll never be in love again, and my husband left me, and my boss doesn't like me, he doesn't understand me, I hate my job. I, I get all that. I've been in this business for a long time. I've worked in in politics, I've worked in entertainment. I see the worst of people, but I also have learned to see the very best in people. So why I'm reaching out to you today is I want to hear your stories. I want to hear about your UFO encounter. I want, to I want you to share with me as best you know how, but I want you to just break it down in an email. You can send it to theaccidentalprofit.com as you have before, or to my email address. Um, for those who, uh, who've gone on Amazon and who've posted these amazing reviews on my book, Keymaster, you want to reach out to me on, on Amazon, do so. But I want to hear your stories. For those who've read my book, and you know I talk about angels, you know I talk about near-death experiences, you know I talk about God, you know I talk about the environment, you know I talk about the animal kingdom, I want to hear your thoughts. If you've had a ghost encounter, I want to hear it. If you are, you know, 
connected like so many of us to the animal kingdom and we want to make a difference on this planet, I am reaching out to you. And like me, if you feel that Mother Earth is in dire need of our love and attention, I want to hear why. What are you doing to help heal the planet? What are the, who are the people that you're connecting with? You know, maybe you might know someone that, that you feel is amazing. All of us have stories to share. All of us want to find answers, but we go back to the talking heads. We go back to the bad relationship. We go back to our coworkers or our neighbors who don't support us. So for those of you who, who need to reach out to us, we will review all these emails. We will go over them with great detail and this will be a collective decision about what stories we feel that need to be explored, investigated, solved. Send your stories to me at theaccidentalprofit.com. And as I said, we'll get back with you. My name is Peter Anthony. I say to you, stand in your truth, share your stories. I wanna hear. <laughs>